Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss quantitative methods survey. This lecture is a part of your paper communication research. Learning outcome. The survey is a method of data collection through which we collect information directly from people. Keeping this in mind, this lecture has been developed to describe at large this quantitative method of data collection and research. The lecture outlines various techniques and steps to conduct a survey. A research may be either quantitative or qualitative or both. Quantitative research in some cases may be considered as the initial stage of a research leading to a wider qualitative analysis. On the other side, the qualitative analysis may sometime also end up with both quantitative as well as the qualitative analysis of the research. Over the past decade, Increase in the number of publications has been witnessed in shaping ways of combining quantitative and qualitative methods. Unlike the qualitative analysis, the interpretations in the case of quantitative analysis more likely follow the analytic procedure. Besides fundamentally featured with the appropriate methods of measurements, quantitative research methodology also deals with the techniques to analyze the relation between such measurements. There are different approaches to understand and apply quantitative analysis in the areas of communication research. In quantitative newspaper analysis, we will mostly count the frequency of the articles, the number of columns, the number of photographs, space in inches, etc. devoted by a newspaper to a particular topic. Noted sociologist Max Weber in 1910 in a meeting of the German Sociological Association as quoted by Hart in 1979 urged his audience to pick up scissors and compass to measure quantitative changes of newspaper contents during last generation, especially in advertising section between editorial and news and between what is generally carried as news and what is not presented at all. For example, you want to study the coverage of climate change in India. Suppose, after selecting two top Indian English dailies for your study and choosing the sample, you may count the total number of stories, total space in inches, the total number of photographs devoted to climate change by the selected Indian dailies. Quantitative analysis in the field of communication research becomes more important when looked through the prism of quantitative coverage theory. The second level agenda setting, the theory suggests that the content of the news stories is comparatively less important as compared to the frequency and salience of exposure. Since quantitative methods of data collection mostly rely on random sampling, the result obtained through such methods are easy to summarize, compare and generalize. The interviews in survey research are more structured as compared to qualitative research. In a quantitative research, data can be collected through numerous techniques. A survey in contrary to survey research is a data collection method through which a researcher can carry out a survey research. As per Kramer, in 1991, quantitative description of specific aspects of a given population, subjective and external validity are three important distinguishing features of a survey research. 
Being a quantitative method of data collection, survey enables the researchers to extract information from a very large sample of the population. In addition to that, the survey also enables to quantitatively study certain characteristics of a population. The survey is actually a process consisting of a number of steps linked to each other. In a similar way as the other methods of data collection, this process also begins with defining the objectives followed by choosing a survey frame and deciding the sample design. To test the hypothesis developed after reviewing the literature, a set of questions are constructed. The survey is often conducted through a questionnaire and in some cases through an interview. After conducting the survey, the collected data is then analyzed. The findings are then disseminated through a report. The need for a survey arises when there is an inadequate data for the purpose of making some generalizations. Although relatively very difficult to measure through other various observational techniques, this research design is operational in bringing forth the information about the attitudes. Even though the dependent and independent variables can't be controlled by the researcher in a survey, but both the variables can be used to explicate the scope of study. In order to learn the needs of the customers, in most of the cases, surveys are often used to obtain feedback from a specific group of people. In addition to recording the opinions of a society or community, a survey may be pivotal in determining the features and describing the living conditions of a population or region. The survey, a very flexible research design, can be conducted mainly through three methods – questionnaire, face-to-face -face interview or telephonic interview. Developing a questionnaire is one of the important steps in the process of conducting a survey. The questionnaire mostly contains close-ended questions apart from open-ended questions in some cases. Sample and Census Survey On the basis of purpose of the study, sampling, time spam, administration, sample size, a survey may be descriptive or analytical. Further, survey can be broadly categorized into two groups, sample survey and census survey. In a sample survey, data are collected from only a fraction of units of populations. Survey are mostly conducted from a representative sample of the population. For example, you choose a sample of 100 boys and 100 girls from your college and collect data from them. A sample survey is economical and consumes less time as compared to the census survey. Census survey In census survey, data are collected for all units in the population. In simple words, a survey of the entire population is called census. For example, government conducts a census every 10 years. It is a very lengthy, costly and time-taking method of research. Based on a wide range of factors, selection of the appropriate techniques for the collection of data is one of the important steps in the survey process. Access to potential participants, literacy, resources, subject matter are some of the key factors which determine a method to be adopted for the study. Types of surveys We can conduct a survey through various approaches. On the basis of these approaches, surveys can be further divided into various types. Cross-sectional survey Longitudinal survey, explanatory of or correlational survey. Cross-sectional survey, it is an approach of collecting data only at one point of time. The method of collecting data from a sample drawn from the specific population at only one point of time is known as the cross-sectional survey. 
Cross sectional surveys design is mostly instrumental in recording the prevalence of particular characteristics in a population. This approach may be applied to both a sample of the population or the whole population. Cross sectional survey help researchers to get an understanding of the happening in a particular group or community at that particular point in time. Even if the data are collected only once at a particular point in time, there are some provisions to compare this data with other items or events of the past, present or in the future to gauge changes. This is economical and less time taking as compared to the longitudinal survey. Now come to the longitudinal survey. This is an approach of conducting a survey of the respondents over a long period of time. A longitudinal survey enables the researcher to observe same variables repeatedly at a different point in time. A panel study may last for months or years or even decades. Unlike taking a snapshot in the case of a cross-sectional survey, the researcher in a longitudinal survey collects data from people again and again at different points in time. This is a very lengthy, expensive and time-taking process. The data is collected from the respondents more than once. In the longitudinal survey, you may either follow up a group of individuals over the period of time or may draw a new sample from the population each time. On the basis of this criteria, a longitudinal survey may be any of the following. Cohort survey, trend survey, panel study. Cohort survey. In the survey, the same group of people are studied again and again over the period of time. Even though samples may be different, but the study focuses on the same subset of a population. Respondents in this type of survey are somehow linked to each other. We can say a specific population is followed over a period of time. This method is designed to keep a track of the changes in the attitudes and behavior associated with maturation of a specific subset of the population. You actually try to analyze the, vis the visible changes among the specific population over time. Trend survey. In trend survey, we take repeated samples from general population over the period of time. It is assumed that different groups of samples drawn at various points in time represents the same population. Even though core questions in this type of longitudinal survey remain to be the same, the respondents in the study keep changing each time. The technique is useful in studying the voting intentions of the people during election campaigns. For example, you studied Rahul's family in the first attempt before the election campaigns and next time, after some time, during the election camp campaign, Rahul's family had been out of the station and you could not include him in your study. So you include Zoya's family. In your sample to study their voting behavior, the third time after the end of the campaign, you studied Rita's family. Panel study is a type longitudinal in which data is collected from the same group of people over various points in time. For example, in the first attempt, you studied your classmate Rahul, Ayan, Rita and Zoya. In the next attempt, after one year, you have to study all your aforementioned classmates again and so on. Dropout or lost participants may affect the study. Correlational or explanatory survey. The surveys are designed to record a correlational or explanatory approach. In this type of survey, the data is collected by the researcher to explore the casual relationship between two or more variables. Steps of survey research The first and most important step in conducting a survey is to clarify the aim of the survey. Second, reviewing some studies based on the survey method may help the researcher to get things more clear. Number three, to achieve the desired goals of the study, selecting an appropriate survey design is of paramount importance. Four, finalizing the sampling method. Number five, selecting the method of data collection like a face-to-face -face interview, questionnaire, telephonic interview, etc. After finalizing the method, a pre-test of the method is also important. 
The collection of data and follow-up is the key to boosting the response rate. After collecting the data, analyze the data. To disseminate the result, an easily understandable report of the findings must be prepared. Now, strengths of survey. Through the help of survey, we can elicit information from very large samples of the population. They are designed to cover a geographically widely spread sample of the population. Being very flexible, the survey can be easily combined with other methods of data collection for more accurate result. Surveys are considered having a high internal and external validity. If sample selected is the representative of the entire population, surveys are economical, easy and efficient as compared to various other methods of data collection. Now, weaknesses of survey. Representativeness of the sample remains to be one of the most talked issues of the survey method. Being a quantitative method, surveys mostly deal with numbers. They hardly address qualitative information. For example, a survey may address a question like how many people scored more than 90% marks. There are fewer provisions that a survey may address why questions like why only two students scored more than 90% marks. Longitudinal surveys are time consuming and costly. Surveys are prone to errors and bias. Summary. So let us summarize what we discussed. We learned the importance of quantitative methods of research in general and in communication research particular. We then discussed the importance of a survey method of data collection and survey research. We also discussed various types of survey research. We also listed some important steps a researcher goes through during the process of survey research. We also tried to draw an outline of the strengths and shortcomings of survey design. We hope that this lecture will help and guide you in engaging in a survey research. Please do attempt the questions in the self-evaluate quadrant. For further reading, suggestions, please refer to the third quadrant. Thank you.